Hey guys, Cameron here. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know to hike Guadalupe Peak, the highest point in the state of Texas. All right guys, so there's a lot of information to cover and I'm going to do my best to get it all in here. But if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer all those questions. Or run over to a Facebook group called Guadalupe Mountains National Park Fan Page. I'm a part of that group. Um, as well as about 9,000 other people at this point. And uh, there's a lot of great uh, trip reports and a lot of good information on the park there as well. So first off, Guadalupe Peak is uh, at an elevation of 8,751 feet above sea level. It is the highest point in the state of Texas. It is located in Guadalupe Mountains National Park, run by the National Park Service out in Culberson County in far west Texas, just south of the New Mexico border. Um, not a lot of towns around, but I figured we'd start off by talking about um, some of the towns you may go through on your way to the park. If you are headed to the park, you're definitely going to drive through at least one of these towns. So if you are flying in, you are going to fly in most likely to El Paso, Texas, which is about an hour and 45 minutes drive west of the park. Um, El Paso is a fairly large city, has pretty much anything you would need there, any sort of lodging, hotels, um, it's going to have Walmart, uh, car rentals, anything you could need, um, you're going to be able to find in El Paso. The next biggest town is Carlsbad, New Mexico, which is about an hour's drive north of Guadalupe Mountains National Park. Um, Carlsbad has most things you're going to need. It has Walmart, grocery stores, um, lots of hotels. It, it has quite a bit of places to eat, things like that. Um, just keep in mind that Carlsbad is in uh, oil field country and at times... The hotel rates there can be a little higher than they are in a lot of other places. The next closest town is Van Horn, Texas, which is about 50 minutes to an hour south of Guadalupe Mountains National Park. And uh, Van Horn is not a real big town, um, but it is right on Interstate 10. So if you're wanting to stay on the interstate most of the way, um, Van Horn is a good place to jump off and head toward the park. Um, Van Horn has places to uh, resupply has uh, truck stops, things like that, um, has lots of hotels and motels, and uh, it also has the perk of uh, hosting the El Capitan Hotel, which is a really cool historic hotel. So if you're wanting to make your climb uh, of Guadalupe Peak into more of an experience, um, splurging on a place to stay like the El Capitan Hotel um, with uh, just its historic significance as well as a really cool restaurant uh, might be uh, a way to splurge a little bit. The uh, next closest town is uh, Dell City, Texas, which is about 40 minute drive from uh, Pine Springs there at Guadalupe Mountains National Park. And Dell City is a little bit different than all these other towns we've been talking about. Dell City is an extremely rural West Texas town. Um, not a whole ton going on there um, besides farming. And you'll be able to see that from uh, Guadalupe Peak. Um, Dell City is a really cool town though. If you want an experience of the local area, um, I highly suggest checking out Dell City. Um, there is uh, gas there if you need gas, um, but uh, not a whole ton else. There are some Airbnbs you can stay at, as well as an RV park, um, but uh, not any like huge grocery stores. There are places if you need a few groceries, and there is a couple um, small uh, places to eat, small restaurants. Um, so. Dell City is definitely a cool place to check out, but doesn't have some of the resources of uh, some of these other larger towns. Now, the uh, closest town to Guadalupe Mountains National Park is White City, New Mexico. Um, it's fairly similar to, uh, the distance anyway, is fairly similar to uh, Dell City. Um, White City is a 35 or 40 minute drive from Pine Springs, um, and uh, it is the gateway to Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Um, so it's a good spot to uh, base out of if you're wanting to visit both national parks. Um, White City doesn't have a whole lot going on there. Um, it is a little bit more touristy, definitely more touristy than, say, Dell City. Um, there is uh, some small hotel. Uh, there is an RV park where you can also stay in tents. Um, like I said, it's the entrance to uh, Carlsbad Caverns. So you have your touristy shops. Um, there's gas, ice, things like that. Um, not uh, big grocery stores, but if you needed some things to eat, you can definitely stop there in White City. So uh, those are your towns and uh, city in El Paso that uh, place to uh, stay and base out of. If you're not wanting to camp near the park, um, you can stay in one of these towns. And uh, that is where you will get your supplies and gas and fuel and things like that. 
Now, if you are wanting to uh, camp at the park, um, the main campground and the main visitor center area at Guadalupe Mountains National Park is Pine Springs Visitor Center. Um, Pine Springs is the main area of the park, um, as well as the main uh, car campground. Um, Pine Springs uh, doesn't have a reservation system. Uh, it is first come, first serve only. Um, it does have spots for RVs and for uh, tents. Um, there are probably around 15, maybe 20 tent sites and uh, probably pretty close to the same in the RV parking lot. And I say parking lot because that is literally what it is. Uh, the RV spots aren't really individual spots. Um, they're just uh, marked off areas around a, uh, a big, bigger uh, trailhead parking lot. Um, there are no uh, electric hookups or uh, direct water hookups or anything like that. Um, but the uh, campground does have uh, water nearby. So if you are tent camping or RV camping, um, you have water there. Um, you have uh, one bathroom with uh, uh, plumbing and a place to go to the bathroom. No showers or anything like that. But they do have a dishwash station. Um, and then there is a pit toilet down closer by the tent sites. Um, and then there are um, the restrooms over at the visitor center itself, which is a probably a quarter mile walk or so from the campground. And uh, the thing that's cool about this campground is that is where the trailhead for Guadalupe Peak is. So if you stay here, you can just get right out of your tent or RV and uh, start hiking straight from there. Um, don't uh, need to drive anywhere. The uh, next closest place to camp, well, let's talk about, there's a uh, place, another campground in the park, Dog Canyon. It's on the north side of Guadalupe Mountains National Park. And uh, straight line shot, it's probably only, oh, 10 or so miles from Guadalupe Peak. However, there are no direct roads around to Guadalupe Peak. So to be able to uh, drive around to the trailhead, it's going to be about an hour and a half to two hours drive from Dog Canyon. So Dog Canyon, similar setup. Um, it is uh, a little bit higher elevation, a little more shielded from uh, the elements and the wind that you may get at Pine Springs. Um, you can have RVs, you can have tents there. Um, this is definitely the least uh, popular campground at the park, um, but uh, I really enjoy Dog Canyon. It's just a little bit of a drive if you're only wanting to do Guadalupe Peak. Um, both Dog Canyon and Pine Springs are $15 a night right now. And uh, they're still a pretty decent deal, especially um, being in the national park itself. So there are some free camping options on uh, BLM land, Bureau of Land Management land, just across the New Mexico border, um, just to the north of the park. And uh, there are two different um, RV or tent campgrounds that I know of. And I say campground very loosely. These are uh, basically gravel parking lots and uh, they are free to stay at. There are no services there, no uh, water, electricity, trash, really anything like that. Um, but uh, this is a free place to stay. So um, I think it's a great backup if you're planning on staying at uh, Pine Springs or at Guadalupe Mountains National Park and it doesn't work out, it's full for some reason because there's no reservations. Um, the BLM land is a great backup. Um, the newer one is called Sunset Reef Campground. And uh, I have a video that I will put in the description below this on how to get to that campground as well as a look around um, that campground. Um, like I said, not a lot going on there, but it is free. If you are staying in an RV and you're looking for some sort of hookups, um, White City and uh, Dell City both have uh, uh, RV campgrounds um, with hookups. And uh, those are um, the closest and most convenient places to stay. Obviously, places like El Paso is going to have RV campground. Um, Van Horn and Carlsbad both have RV campgrounds, but they're just a little bit farther away. So uh, I would recommend staying at the White City RV Park just because of uh, how close it is and uh, how easy it is to uh, access the park. Um, I have never actually been to the Dell City RV Park, but I do know there is one there. And uh, if you're planning on visit visiting the uh, sand dunes at the park, or uh, would like a great view of the western side of the Guadalupe Mountains, um, the RV park in Dell City um, would be a good choice. So now the closest camping to the peak itself for the little bit uh, more adventurous of us is uh, the Guadalupe Peak Backcountry Campsite. This is a backpacking campsite, so uh, you have to uh, carry everything with you up there. Um, this campsite is uh, about a mile um, short of the peak itself. 
It is about a three and a half mile hike from Pine Springs up Guadalupe Peak to get to these campsites. I believe there are probably six or eight campsites up there. Um, and these are also first come first serve. Uh, this, these are uh, free campsites to stay at, um, but you do need a permit. You have to get it from the uh, office there at Pine Springs. Um, you just pay your entrance fee into the park and then the campsites themselves are free. Um, there is nothing up there. As far as water, um, you may possibly get cell phone reception, um, but it's definitely not guaranteed. This is a really cool place to stay, especially if you're wanting to do a sunrise or sunset hike to the peak itself. Um, this is a great place to uh, camp out for the night. Um, this is a great place to camp whenever it is not busy, but if it is busy, um, this these campgrounds up there at Guadalupe Peak can seem uh, fairly overcrowded. Um, there's not a lot of protection from the wind um, up there, so you're pretty exposed to the elements. I definitely suggest uh, staking out all your guy lines on your tent. Um, but if you catch it on the perfect night, calm with a, a clear night, you're going to get some amazing, amazing night skies up there. And you'll be camping just about higher than anybody else in the state. All right, so let's talk about the seasons to hike Guadalupe Peak. Uh, Guadalupe Peak can be hiked at any point in the year. Um, it does receive snow and ice during the winter, um, but it will usually melt within a week or so. Um, I would say the ice is definitely more of the dangerous element there, um, which they do get every single winter, but like I said, doesn't stick around for long. Um, so during winter, it can definitely be climbed. Um, you can use uh, micro spikes if you feel like you may need more traction on your shoes. Um, but uh, the majority of the things you're going to want to look out for at Guadalupe Mountains, no matter uh, which season it is, is the wind. Guadalupe Mountains National Park is uh, very notorious for being extremely windy. Now, that's not to say that they don't have um, lots of days with no wind. It's just to say that um, do not be surprised to uh, catch 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts um, on your trip. And I feel like uh, everybody deserves to catch at least one good day of really hard winds at Guadalupe Mountains to be able to get the full uh, experience of the mountain range. Um, but during winter, it can definitely be climbed. Um, expect lows to be um, really cold. Um, it just depends on if there's a front. So I see a lot of people ask, um, can what's the lows, what's the highs for this time of year? Just depends on what fronts come through. Winter can be pleasant. You can get um, some warm sun and a calm day, or you can get the snow and ice storms, um, and it can be uh, below freezing, uh, definitely below freezing, and it can also be even below zero. Um, wind chills definitely be way below zero at some points during winter, um, but that's not to say you can't catch it on a good day, like I said, and uh, just have a really pleasant, um, cool uh, afternoon to hike up to the peak. So uh, springtime is notorious for uh, being probably the windiest time of year at uh, Guadalupe Mountains. Um, spring temperatures can definitely vary, um, but definitely go expecting wind. Um, spring is a little bit milder, obviously, than winter. But uh, yeah, expect wind if you're going in winter or spring for sure. Uh, summer can be brutally hot hiking Guadalupe Peak, um, but that's not to say it can't be done. Um, I have personally hiked up a couple times during summer and didn't think it was bad at all. Um, just start earlier in the morning and uh, try to stay out of the sun as much as you can. Um, and then embrace the wind if you get some during summer, help cool you off a little bit. Um, definitely want to cover up and use some sunscreen during summer. Um, highs can get up to uh, around 100 degrees. Um, but most of the time, especially once you go up the mountain a little bit in elevation, it becomes a little more pleasant. Obviously, the uh, best time of year after going through those other three is um, probably fall. And uh, fall in the Guadalupe Mountains can be a really magical time. Sometimes uh, you wouldn't even believe that you are in uh, Texas because of the fall colors and the amazing fall foliage at uh, Guadalupe Mountains National Park. Um, during fall, you're on average going to get uh, the best temperatures, uh, really cool, crisp mornings, and then warm up a little bit in the afternoons. can still be windy. Um, you can still uh, get cold weather. It can still be a little hotter. Um, it's that time of year where everything's changing just like the leaves are. Um, but on average, fall, uh, October, November, even late September, that's going to be your prime uh, months for going to the park. So if you want your best chance at hitting it perfect, um, Fall would be a great time to uh, 
uh, try to go out there and hike the peak. That being said, fall is probably the busiest time at the park, or at least one of the busiest times because of all the people coming out to check out the uh, fall uh, leaf color change. Um, it's really popular at the park and uh, not so much on Guadalupe Peak itself, but you will be able to see a lot of the color change in the canyons from the Guadalupe Peak Trail. And a lot of people come out to hike a lot of the other trails and uh, check out the fall colors. So fall is a really pleasant time of year. Um, that being said, we did go this past fall and uh, catch it on a really cold, windy day. And it was uh, really freezing um, at the top. So it, it all is just luck of the draw. Um, but that is uh, basically the uh, what the uh, seasons look like out there. All right, so now let's talk about the hike itself. So the hike from uh, Pine Springs Visitor Center at Guadalupe Mountains National Park starts around 5,800 feet in elevation and uh, goes up 3,000 feet over the course of 4.2 miles to the summit um, where you end up at 8,751 feet at the summit of Guadalupe Peak. So it is 4.2 miles uh, one way, 8.4 miles uh, there and back. It is a, just an out and back trail. There is no loop trail. Um, it is uh, accessed primarily by hikers, um, but horses are allowed to uh, ride up to uh, almost to the very top uh, where you'll see some hitching posts and uh, they can dismount there and make it the rest of the way to the top. Um, but uh, primarily 99.9% .9 of the uh, people that go up to the top are hiking. Um, the trail itself is extremely rocky, um, a little bit loose rocks and uh, just really exposed sections on this trail. Um, if you want a much better uh, understanding of what this hike looks like, I will post a link to a couple of my videos of doing the peak itself, as well as the last one I just did with my mom this last fall. Um, I give a lot of explanations of the hike itself, step by step, um, on your way up. So uh, I will put that in the description down below. That's a great one to follow along with. Um, for somebody who's done the peak before, from my perspective, as well as somebody who's never done the peak before, from a mom's perspective. And uh, that was a really great experience doing that with her, and I'm glad we got to do that. The hike itself is, uh, it, it just depends on your physical capabilities, whether um, you think it's challenging or not. I would say the majority of people think that the Guadalupe Peak Trail is a really challenging um, climb. Um, but that's not to say that some people are able to go up and down and uh, don't think it's a big deal at all. I uh, tend to think that it is a hard hike, um, but it's definitely doable. And the majority of people who set out to hike the trail, whether you uh, really prepare for it physically um, beforehand or not, um, most people should be able to make it to the top. Uh, that being said, um, a lot of people don't make it. A lot of people have to turn around and then um, unfortunately there have been people who um, haven't uh, made it up to the top um, because uh, there's been people that have died from uh, heart attacks and things like that on their way up. That's definitely not to scare anybody off from the trail, anything like that. That's just take into consideration your health and your physical uh, condition whenever you're hiking up to the top. Um, like I said, this can be done by most people. You'll see anywhere from kids ages uh, four years old, hike up to the top by themselves, um, all the way up to someone who's maybe 80, 90 years old, make it up to the top. Um, it just all depends on the individual. Um, for most average adults, you're definitely going to be able to make this. Um, the hike itself being 8.4 miles um, takes most people on average six to eight hours. So definitely can be done as a day hike, which is what most people do. It can also be done as the overnighter where you stay at the Guadalupe Peak backcountry campsites. Um, I think that's a really cool experience. I like doing that. Um, and I wouldn't want to stay up there any more than one night, although technically you can stay at the Guadalupe Peak campsites for two nights. Um, the only reason I would suggest you don't do that is that that trail doesn't go anywhere else. So once you've been up to the top, um, you can't access any other area really from that trail other than uh, the peak itself. So um, yeah, there's nowhere really else to go and explore. Um, but if you'd like to just camp out up there for a couple nights or spend a couple nights on the peak, um, that is uh, an option also. So something I see a lot on uh, Facebook and some of the forums and things are people wanting to do Guadalupe Peak for sunrise. And uh, I've never done it for sunrise, but I do know 
um, that the typical time to leave uh, if you want to be on the peak for sunrise is around 3 or 4 a.m., depending on the time of year. Um, just know you'll be hiking in the dark and uh, the trail is really rocky. It's very rugged and exposed. So uh, there are those risks involved. Definitely need a headlamp, great flashlight, backup batteries, things like that. Um, but it can definitely be done. Um, I've seen pictures from sunrise. They look great. Um, I don't know that that option is uh, what's uh, best for me. Um, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but I wouldn't go out of my way to go up and uh, do sunrise. Um, just because the hike itself, just during the day, any time during the day, I think is amazing. Um, that being said, I have done it at sunset. And uh, there's a really amazing sunset from Guadalupe Peak. Um, but I did stay at uh, the Guadalupe Peak uh, campsites that night. So I was only a mile away and I can get there in 30 minutes. Um, but uh, if you camp at Pine Springs, uh, each night you're able to look up after dark and you can see people's headlamps coming down the switchbacks, um, people that stayed up there for uh, sunset. So that's kind of neat to watch. Definitely, if you're going to do sunrise or sunset, make sure you have a really great headlamp and backup batteries because I would not want to get stuck up on that trail um, with no source of light because there are sections that are really exposed with long drop-offs and uh, you don't want to uh, run out of light. You want to be able to see where you're stepping. So from Pine Springs, um, you can't see the summit of Guadalupe Peak. So whenever you start your hike, you cannot see where you're going to end your hike at. So uh, yeah, so a lot of people think that they can see the top. Oh, that's the top there. You can't see the summit of Guadalupe Peak whenever you start your hike. So the way I judge about how far up I am whenever I'm hiking the peak is look straight across uh, the canyon over at Hunter's Peak, which is uh, the sixth highest peak in the state of Texas, and know that you're going a few hundred feet higher than that summit. So uh, on your way up, you can just look straight over across the canyon. And uh, if you're about halfway up that mountain, you're about halfway up uh, Guadalupe Peak. That's just a easy little uh, tip. Um, if you uh, think you can see the top within the first mile or two, from uh, the Guadalupe Peak Trail, you're not looking at the right thing. The first mile and a half of the Guadalupe Peak Trail is uh, definitely the hardest part of the trail. It's the most exposed uh, and down in the desert is going to be the uh, hottest during the summer. So um, I suggest not starting the Guadalupe Peak Trail in mid-afternoon, definitely in summer, because that first mile and a half you're going to be hiking uh, without shade and uh, it's going to be very exposed. So um, there's a lot of steps um, in the trail during the first mile and a half, and it's going to seem really hard doing the trail. Um, but if you can make it past that first mile and a half, you'll go around uh, the ridge and make uh, the turn. Um, some call it around the bend uh, section on uh, Guadalupe Peak Trail. This is after a mile and a half, and uh, you'll know it whenever you go around this because uh, everything on the trail changes um, once you get on uh, that side of the mountain. Um, you will uh, go into a pine forest and uh, it can get windy, but uh, you have the pine trees to kind of block the wind. You get the shade. Um, it's just a totally different experience. It's, it's really neat being able to go from two different sides of the mountain on your way up in uh, one trip. So hiking up uh, through the forest is really neat. Um, and then up toward the top, once you get within the last uh, mile to half mile of the uh, trail, um, it becomes uh, a little more exposed again. You kind of come out of the trees and uh, you're going to get um, a lot of uh, great views, but a lot of exposure to the elements as well. This is the section where it's going to get super windy um, if it is windy up there on the uh, peak itself. So uh, speaking of getting that close to the peak, you will uh, be able to see the actual summit um, about the time you get to the Guadalupe uh, Peak backcountry campsites. Uh, about a mile, maybe a mile and a quarter, mile and a half, something like that, um, just down from the peak. Um, you'll be able to see the summit itself, and uh, it's a really cool, uh, awe-inspiring um, view looking up at it. And then obviously once you get up on the top, just one of the most amazing views um, that you'll ever see, and definitely one of the best views in the state of Texas. So things you'll see from the top is uh, the big iconic uh, rock that you look down on, um, from Guadalupe Peak itself, whenever you are looking south, is uh, El Capitan. This is the Texas version of El Capitan, not the one that's in uh, Yosemite. Um, just a really cool rock formation. Um, you can look back into the Guadalupe mountain range itself, looking north and uh, east from the peak. And uh, just some really huge mountains there, um, over 8,000 feet. And then uh, the biggest 
uh, awe-inspiring part of the view is definitely the look down into the uh, desert, uh, 3,000 or more feet below you. And uh, looking across the salt flats, um, you can see Dell City, all those little um, crop circles you can see, that's all Dell City out there where they're farming. And uh, just some really cool views off of Guadalupe Peak itself. Then uh, you get your picture next to the uh, pyramid, the uh, summit marker at the top. That's really neat. That was put there before uh, the National Park was established. And uh, it's a really neat area. Um, most times they have an ammo can up there with a summit register. You can write your name in and uh, your date and a little bit about your trip if you want. Um, just keep it short and know that other people need to write stuff in there and that log is carried up there by a volunteer. So uh, don't take up two or three pages writing a, a big novel about your trip up there. Um, but uh, actually they took it down this last year because of COVID and because people were putting trash in there. Um, hopefully they get it back up there soon. Um, but that's not like a geocache to put things in and take things out of. That's just an ammo can to keep the uh, summit log protected from the elements. So do your best to keep everything cleaned up up there. They've been having a lot of trouble um, with uh, the higher visitation to the park with trash and things like that at the summit. Speaking of keeping things clean on uh, the Guadalupe Peak Trail, I would highly suggest that you go to the bathroom before um, you start your hike um, because there are not a whole lot of places to get off trail and not be seen um, if you need to go to the bathroom right off the trail. Um, the trail is steep on both sides of the trail, so um, it's hard to get off the trail and uh, be able to walk on flat ground because it drops off a lot of places. So definitely try to go to the bathroom if you can before you head up that way. Also, if you were to need to dig a hole uh, to go really go to the bathroom, um, the uh, mountain is made out of rock, so it's really hard to dig. There's not a lot of dirt to dig through. Um, just please do not leave your toilet paper um, on the side of the trail. That's incredibly disgusting for everybody. Um, yeah, so just plan ahead and uh, make that a consideration before you start your hike. Um, there are uh, no uh, services or anything you can access off of the Guadalupe Peak Trail. There's no water, so bring all your water with you. Uh, the park suggests that you bring a, a gallon of water per person per day during summer. Please do not bring any less than that because you will drink way more um, water than uh, you might expect out there in the uh, dry air and the wind and uh, the Guadalupe Mountains. Um, during winter, you may get away with a little bit less than a gallon, but um, I just wouldn't cut water short. That's not a place that I would uh, uh, cut my weight short. Definitely want to have uh, all the water you can get and then snacks and things like that um, because there is nowhere to uh, stop really. There's no benches. There's no uh, place to refill water, anything like that. Um, some places on the Guadalupe Peak Trail, um, you can get cell phone access, but not all of it. Um, most people can get cell phone access from the peak itself. And uh, that's really neat experience to be able to uh, call somebody if you needed to, or just a text and check in, um, things like that. Um, most people are up there taking pictures and videos, um, but you can uh, make a phone call or text if you have to. So I know a lot of people are concerned about hiking the trail solo, and I've done it a couple times solo, totally fine, no big deal. Um, I will say several years back, if you hiked it solo, there's a good chance you were gonna be hiking by yourself most of the time. Um, but now within the last year or two, um, the Guadalupe Peak Trail has become so popular that on most days, um, you're gonna be hiking with quite a few other people. Um, so don't worry about going solo. Um, there's gonna be other people around. Um, and there may be more people than you want around on a weekend, holiday, um, any sort of school holiday, things like that. Um, the trail can get really popular and kind of overcrowded. Um, the parking lots can fill at Pine Springs to the point where you can't even get a parking spot or get into the park. So uh, take that into consideration. Um, the, uh, the uh, peak itself can get really popular with people hanging out. And uh, it's not uncommon to see pictures of there being uh, 20 or 30 people sitting around the summit taking in the views. So um, you can definitely hike with a group or you can definitely hike it solo. Um, just don't uh, expect a magical wilderness experience where you're out there by yourself because there are definitely going to be other people around if the weather's uh, any uh, amount decent. Um, if you catch it on a really bad weather day, you may possibly be the only person crazy enough to make it up to the peak. 
um, but you're going to have people with you most other times. So Gualapay Mountains National Park itself has become increasingly popular over the last year as a lot of parks have, um, especially um, people sharing on social media about Gualapay Peak. That is the main thing people come to the park to do. And uh, like I said, the parking lot uh, can fill up. Um, it's crazy. I never would have thought it, but I have seen the entire parking lot at Pine Springs be full uh, by 9.30 a.m., um, on a weekend and uh, they were turning people away and not letting them access the park because there were no parking spots left. The parking lot at the back of Pine Springs by the trailhead itself is uh, really small. It's the same parking lot that the RVs park in and there may be only 10 to 20 parking spots there um, to park right directly next to the trailhead. Those will fill up almost immediately. So uh, if you get a spot there, it's because you got there uh, probably before sunup or uh, you're just extremely lucky. Other than that, there is parking at Pine Springs Visitor Center. There's a pretty big parking lot there. Um, but like I said, it does fill up at some times and uh, they will turn you away. Um, if you go during the week, I wouldn't be too concerned. Or if you show up in uh, mid to late afternoon, um, you have a better shot at getting a parking spot. Never thought I'd have to be given a warning about getting a parking spot at uh, Guadalupe Mountains National Park, but uh, that's the situation here in 2021 anyway. So um, you can show up at the park at uh, any time. There is no gate at Pine Springs. If you want to start your hike at 3 a.m. and you show up at 3 a.m., that's totally fine. Um, you can show up at any point. Um, they won't let you sleep in your car at the park, so don't plan on parking and sleep in your car because you may wake up with a ticket on your car. Um, but there are a couple rest stops um, just north and south of the park itself, um, state rest stops that you can uh, park at and sleep if you need to. Um, that's another free option for staying at if you just need a few hour nap or something like that. Um, but at uh, Pine Springs itself, uh, you can't sleep in your car. As far as paying your permits, um, the park does have a per person a fee of $10 to access the park. And uh, you can pay that at the Pine Springs Visitor Center, which is open from 8 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. Or there is a self-pay station right next to the trailhead at the uh, back of the Pine Springs Road. And uh, you can park there and pay at the little kiosk. It's just a, a self-pay envelope. Write your information on there, put your money in, and then uh, put your stub on your... Uh, dash so they know you've paid and like i said if you'd like to show up at 3 a.m self-pay put the stub in your dash and then start hiking you are more than welcome to do that um, that is definitely not against the rules um, just make sure that you have paid that um, entrance fee if you have a national parks pass that also covers your entrance fee for you and everybody in your car and you just need to uh, hang that up in your window and then uh, you can start your hike up to guadalupe peak well, guys, that's, uh, I know, a whole lot of information, maybe a little more than you were uh, hoping for, but hopefully that covers pretty much everything. Like I said, I have uh, videos uh, linked down below to uh, the actual hike itself if you want to see now um, what it looks like. But I just wanted to go over some of the rules and logistics of the trip because I know there's a ton of questions about that online and uh, people have never been to the park. Um, the park itself is a, it's a big park. There's lots to do there, um, lots to do besides Guadalupe Peak. Um, if you think Wallet Bay Peak Trail is overcrowded, just get off further into the backcountry and uh, you may not see anybody for a couple days. Um, it's a really great area, really underrated part of the state. And a lot of people don't even know that Texas has big mountains like that. Um, it's just a really, really cool experience to be able to do Guadalupe Peak and uh, experience to be out at Guadalupe Mountains National Park. I love the area. Uh, take care of it. If you head out there, um, let your friends know how great it was. Um, and uh, just have a great time. Uh, hope everybody stays safe out there. Like I said, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to comment down below or uh, contact me on uh, Facebook through the uh, Facebook group. Uh, appreciate you guys following along. Hope I answered your questions, and uh, have fun out there. We'll see you next time.